Hey everybody, Erin from The Impatient Gardener here, and this is a video I never wanted to make. It turns out that my garden has boxwood blight. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's go sit in a chair so we can talk about this. So I started this video on Saturday morning, and the first time I recorded it was then, so that's why you see a little bit of a wardrobe change from that, what you just saw there. Uh, now it's Monday night, and already this situation has changed, so I thought I'd just refilm it so I can kind of let you know where I'm at right now with this. So yes, I just found out late last week that uh, plant samples that I sent in to the um, University Plant Diagnostics Lab came back positive for boxwood blight. In fact, they were the first case, identified case of boxwood blight in my county. And that was the information I was working on then. And now today I've actually spent about half an hour on the phone um, with a very nice person from the Department of Agriculture who is looking into this because uh, boxwood blight is very uncommon here in, uh, I should say relatively uncommon in Wisconsin in terms of positively identified cases. Surely there is much more of it out there. Um, and actually, we, she thinks that my case is actually only the fifth time in the state that it's been positively identified in the landscape, meaning in a person's garden. Okay, so what is boxwood blight? <laughs> boxwood blight is a fungus um, that is terrible for boxwoods. It kills boxwoods. If you follow British gardening magazines or television shows or what's happening in British gardening, you might be better up to speed on the kind of damage that boxwood blight can do because it's been in, in uh, England for, I think, since the 90s. I think it was first identified in the United States in like 2011 and the first, it was first identified in the state of Wisconsin in 2018. The last information I could find about it suggested that it was in, found positively ID'd in 30 states, but that information was from 2019. So obviously there's more now. Um, so the one thing I would say first of all is that uh, boxwood blight is a fungus. So it, it proliferates in ways that funguses would. High humidity, um, limited airflow, um, a certain temperature range. So some places have boxwood blight, but it's not that big of a problem because it just doesn't have a great environment in which to grow. But you can get a plant from a place that has boxwood blight and you can bring it and where it's not a big deal and then you can bring it to a place where it does have environmental conditions that can be a real problem for it and suddenly that becomes a big issue. Okay, so the, the boxwoods that have been positively ID'd with this are in the garden at the end of my driveway it's a project I did in 2018. It's actually one of the more popular blog posts that I have. Um, and it's a group of five boxwoods. Those boxwoods are Chicago Land Green, um, which is also known as Glencoe. And I believe that I spotted suspicious um, leaves and like splotchy leaves and, and different things happening with leaves very early on with those. I actually think I spotted some things that looked odd to me in 2018 or possibly 2019. Um, and splotchy leaves and a discoloration of leaves is one of the potential signs. Now that led me to believe that this was something I, that I bought these boxwoods already infected. Um, what I learned today when I talked to the person from the Department of Agriculture is that boxwood blight tends to move very quickly. It tends to go from being ID'd to decimating the bush or the shrub within that same growing year. So this is lasting a little bit longer. So it might be that this was introduced and not purchased. So one of the things, we'll talk about where we go from here, but one of the things that's gonna happen is the Department of Agriculture is going to make an attempt to try to figure out maybe if this might have come um, from the place where I bought this. So I'll get to that sort of in the next steps thing. Um, but what I did was I was watching it and I noticed those splotchy leaves. And so I knew boxwood blight had been found in the state 
Um, and my, my head immediately went to, is this box of blight? And then I thought the odds of that were pretty low because honestly, what are the odds that I would find box of blight in my garden when it had first been found at a growing facility, not anywhere else in the state that same year. However, over the past few years, I've noticed little things, not really doing as well, more splotchiness, a few areas that aren't doing well. Last year I started to notice areas that had complete dieback, like chunks that had complete dieback. And that got my suspicions raised. I thought, well, we'll just watch this for a little bit because there are other things that can kind of, a little bit, mimic that, there's bugs, sorry, that can kind of mimic that. Um, but then this spring I looked at it and there were huge areas that were completely skeletonized. And then I saw something that I know to be a very distinctive sign of boxwood blight, which is black streaks on the stem. So I cut samples from several different boxwoods over there and I sent them all into the plant diagnostics clinic, which um, manages, which takes a look at boxwood samples for free um, because the state is trying very hard to get a handle on this before this becomes a really widespread problem. And then I got an email back that said, yes, those have been positively ID'd. And the way they ID those is they grow those samples out in a moist chamber at a certain, um, at a certain humidity, and then they look for the spores of this fungus. So how does boxwood, um, how does boxwood blight spread? Well, this fungus is sticky, so it doesn't fly through the air it sticks onto things. So it sticks on plant materials. It also sticks on your tools. It sticks on clothing. It sticks on dogs. And that's how it can move. And then once that fungus goes from there, it can attach to another box. So by the way, pachysandras are also affected by this disease because they're in that same family. So I have been practicing extremely extremely fastidious care around boxwoods in terms of picking up all my clippings, um, sanitizing all of my tools, watching what I'm wearing. But what I learned today is that I might not have gone far enough because I never thought about the soil being contaminated. So I've been walking in and out of that garden. You guys saw me cut down all those grasses in there in the spring cleanup video. Um, and I made it a point to never touch the boxwoods. But what I failed to realize was that those fungal spores could be sitting on the ground. And then I walked through there in my boots and then I walked to another part of my garden. I will say that most of my box, all of my boxwoods, the rest of them in the garden look fine right now, but I will have to keep a very close eye on them because there is a chance that I may have inadvertently spread this throughout my garden. Fortunately, we don't live in an area where there's like big boxwood hedges or a lot of people growing boxwoods. So hopefully I haven't spread this outside my own garden, but that's possible too. So what do you need to know about boxwood blight? Well, first of all, know that this is not a comprehensive video. Although I've done a lot of reading about boxwood blight and I know the basics, um, I am just getting myself up to speed here right now as well. So um, I'm going to link in the description a lot of sources, including the fact sheet, access to the fact sheet that um, the university sent to me, um, any other, you know, scientific sources that I can find for you to do a little bit of additional reading um, or to find out some more information about it for yourself, because I am still learning about this. And like a lot of things, um, sometimes when you find out that you personally are affected by it, that's when you go into overdrive seeking information. But I've told you how it spreads, so that's really important. And so you need to understand that anytime you're around a boxwood that might be infected, you could pick it up in some way or you know, completely inadvertently and not trying to do that. The next thing I would say is that the signs you can look for are those splotchies, the splotchiness on the leaves, the sort of skeletonized dieback, rapid, and, um, and these black streaks. If you see some of these things happening on your boxwoods, don't freak out because there are other diseases that can have similar, um, similar things can happen with the boxwoods. So I would recommend that if you think for some reason that you have 
boxwood blight, the thing to do is to get some plant samples into a uh, plant diagnostic lab. Um, look to your public university for that, an extension system, um, or your ma local master gardener organization to help you out with figuring out how to do that. Um, sometimes you can also send pictures, although again, this is something that I think most places are gonna wanna positively ID in a lab. Send those off and then you'll know for sure. But how can you prevent boxwood blight, which might be the better question to be asking yourself. So the first thing to know is that some boxwood varieties are more resistant to boxwood blight or more susceptible to boxwood blight, however you want to look at it, than others. This one that I have affected is Chicago Land Green is one that is more susceptible to it. And I do have other um, Chicago Land Green boxwoods on the property. Those I actually grew myself uh, from tiny little plugs probably for the last maybe eight years or so. So those never came off the property. So I know that if those get it, I introduced it there myself. Um, so there are lots of lists out there. I'll, I'll try to find some good ones, but do search the internet. There are places on the internet where you can find lists of boxwood varieties that are less susceptible. And you should look for those if you're adding boxwoods to your property. Um, there is also some breeding happening in boxwoods that are breeding highly resistant varieties. They are not fully resistant, but highly resistant varieties. And I would say if you are able to source those and they're hardy in your zone and you can find those, I think it's probably a really good thing to do because knowing how easy it is for this um, fungus to spread, um, it could become a huge problem and everywhere. And that could make the difference between keeping the boxwoods you have already um, or the ones you might purchase in the future and not having them. And the last thing I would say is be careful where you source your boxwoods from. So um, as I talked with the representative from the Department of Agriculture today, I asked her a little bit about um, boxwood certified um, uh, garden centers. And in the state of Wisconsin, there are only two garden centers that have signed a boxwood compliance agreement. And there are all sorts of criteria they have to meet to get this, including that all boxwoods that they bring on site are quarantined for at least 30 days, and they really prefer 90 days. Um, you can't bring, they do not allow people to bring boxwoods back onto the property. So if they have a guarantee or something, you may not bring dead boxwoods onto their property. They don't allow contractors who have been hauling other boxwoods to bring their trucks on the property without sanitizing it first. It's a very rigorous process. It's expensive and it's slow and you will likely pay more for those boxwoods. Uh, to me, it's an investment in all the plants I already have in this property. So ironically, I ordered more boxwoods for the patio garden uh, this winter and I ordered those, um, purposely sought out one of those two boxwood compliant um, nurseries. And by the way, if you're in Wisconsin, I will tell you it is Johnson's Gardens and McKay Nurseries are the two that the Department of Agriculture culture told me um, have signed boxwood compliance agreements in your own state um, you know look for a list of those or ask the nursery you're shopping at um, if they have signed a boxwood compliance agreement or if they do anything to mitigate the spread of boxwood blight um, you know, some nurseries find that process of having to quarantine plants um, very onerous and they, they need to, especially these days when plants are flying out the door so quick, they need to get those out, to, they feel they want to get those out to their clientele or their customers quickly. Um, I personally have never and would not buy a boxwood from a big box store or a garden center that was so big it was almost big box like um, because of this problem. because. Even though they might be buying from very reputable growers, this could be so prolific that if at nowhere in the process are they checking for this, it could pop up, you could bring it home. Um, I did buy two boxwoods already this year um, from a different nursery, and I was actually intending to put them in the new garden to replace the two that are clearly shot over there. 
and uh, those I have quarantined myself. Um, they are separate from all my other boxwoods in the area. It's been at least 30 days now. I'm probably just gonna keep waiting it out until I really need to plant them, just to check them over and make sure that there are no obvious signs of something nefarious there. Because now that this has bit me, I'm obviously hypersensitive to this. The point is, just know what you're looking for and don't freak out because, again, this is not hugely common, but if we can all work together to catch this early on, it won't become that either. So where do we go from here? Well, the this thing with boxwood blight is that once you have it, those once those plants have it, they have it. There is no treatment for it. You can spray fungicide to prevent it. I, I know that that is preventing it on other plants that do not have it. And I'm not sure, I don't fully understand the use of those because I haven't had much time to investigate this about whether that can sort of keep it from killing a plant or not. Um, but the real thing that is recommended um, and what I will be doing, actually, I, when I talked to the person from the Department of Agriculture today, she told me this is what was recommended. And this was my plan anyway, which is pull them out and they need to be destroyed. Um, in fact, when this was found in the state of Wisconsin in a growing field, that entire field, an entire, I don't know how much, but imagine a giant growing facility, had to be destroyed and they buried those plants six feet deep. Um, so I need to be very careful about how I dispose them. Um, some of the fact sheets talk about burning them or double bagging them. Um, it sounds to me like they would like to go even further than that, to be honest. Um, they. The Department of Agriculture person I talked to wasn't exactly keen of me just double bagging them and taking them to my town dump. So I'm gonna wait for some information. On top of that, the Department of Agriculture may want to come out here and just take a look at them. Um, and I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but I was asked not to remove them yet. Just basically what I was told was stay away from that area, don't step in there, just wait until we give you further instructions. And to be honest with you, I'm happy to do whatever is asked of me as far as this goes um, because it's in all gardeners' interest to nip this thing in the bud and do whatever we can to help this process. And, and while it is unfortunate that I have this problem, and I know, I know it's in other places, but it's unfortunate I have this problem. By the same token, um, it's good that I knew a few of the signs so that we could actually catch this one we did. And I think it's also probably good that I have a little bit of a platform to share this information with a broader audience so that maybe you guys can all learn from my unfortunate circumstance here. Um, so I will be pulling those boxwoods out and disposing of them in one of the ways that is recommended um, by the university and the Department of Agriculture. Um, and then that soil, uh, probably carries this pathogen. Um, I'm gonna wait for the instructions and I will just kind of keep updating you on what happens next. There's a chance that I could maybe burn that root hole and kill some of that pathogen. It will probably exist in other places. I was also told that all of that hackle and cloa that I grow in that garden, which I was planning on dividing and moving around the garden, I'm not gonna do that either because those spores could also be in the soil that I pull from there, which is near those boxwoods. So everything that is in that garden will stay in that garden. Um, the other thing that you can do for boxwood blight to help prevent it is mulch underneath your boxwoods because that can keep those spores from sort of splashing up on there. I have also been researching other shrubs that I could plant there. I mean, boxwoods are a very handy plant and that's why I don't wanna see them go away. They are growing over there in a part sun, part shade. It might be more I'm not sure which one it's more of, but it might be like right in the middle um, area where there are is heavy deer pressure and they are evergreen. So there, as far as I can find so far, there is no other plant that grows to that size that I want that grows in zone five, is deer resistant and can handle sort of a part sun, part shade situation and is evergreen. The boxwood is the only one that checks all those boxes. So I have to think out of the box if I'm gonna, out of the box, get it? Um, if I'm gonna replace those. I, I don't love losing five boxwoods with three years of growth under their belt. 
Um, mostly at this point, my concern is for the rest of the boxwoods in my garden. I will update you guys as this, as this develops. I mean, this is pretty close to breaking garden news. Um, and I will let you know where things go with the, um, you know, as, as I learn more about this, I will share this with you because I think it's important, you know, if one good thing can come out of this, it's that I could maybe um, share some of this and help you guys learn from what happened in my garden. All right, have a great day in your garden and we'll see you soon. Bye.